Good morning. I'm Chuck Staben, president of the University of Idaho. So pleased to have so many of you here today. We have quite an interesting crowd with us right now. We have young women from our first Exploratorium for Young Women for Girls, right, in the purple shirts. Good? All right. Thank you. So we've got those folks. We've got our engineering advisory boards on campus with us. If you're an engineering advisory board member, could you raise your hand? And we'll give you a round of applause. Thank you. We also have some special guests for Expo, and, I'll be, and we'll be introducing one in a moment who will speak to us. But while I've got you here, I just wanted to, to note that Bert Rutan is here with us. Bert, you're right there, right? Thank you very much. Uh, aeronautical innovator. And we have a young innovator who may be ready to you know, take over at some point. Alex Knoll is over here with us, and you'll hear from him tomorrow as well. Thank you. Of course, we have faculty and staff with us as well. If you're a faculty or staff member from U of I, could you raise your hand? We'll give you a round of applause. Thank you. Well, at this point, what I'd like to do is introduce the dean of the College of Engineering, Larry Stauffer. Most of you know him very well. And we're very pleased to have Larry as our dean. And, uh, and thanks to him and his staff for arranging such an extraordinary event. Larry? I haven't even said anything yet. All right. There we go. Is this coming through OK? All right, good, good. All right, so thanks, Chuck. Uh, really appreciate you being here tonight. I uh, also want to recognize my boss, uh, John Winsack, provost of the university. Got to give him a hand. <laughs> OK. That earned me some brownie points. All right, that's good. So wel welcome and thank you for joining us uh, tonight as we kick off the 25th, 25, 25th Annual Engineering Expo. It's the longest running showcase of engineering student innovation in Idaho and in the Northwest. Uh, this year's Expo theme is celebrating the next 25 years in engineering and what it means to engineer like a vandal. And for those you may not know, the mascot of the University of Idaho or the Idaho Vandals. Okay. Uh, we have, we've come a long ways in 25 years. It's been, uh, I've been here to watch the event grow and to evolve. We had our first expo in uh, 1993. It was mostly mechanical engineering and some electrical engineering capstone students in the same, the same ballroom. And, um, you know, it's in, it involved, maybe we had maybe 100 students and faculty and a handful of industry sponsors uh, here in the sub. Today, and or I should say tomorrow when you see the event, uh, Expo will incorporate all of our engineering disciplines, involve more than 300 students, over 60 teams, more than 50 judges, and several dozen industry event and project partners, uh, engineering departments, research units, other colleges and programs at the university, and more than 500 uh, K through 16 visiting students who come to experience engineering at the University of Idaho. It's quite an undertaking, quite a difference from 25 years ago. Uh, tonight, we're fortunate to have with us many individuals that play a vital role in supporting and making Expo happen. We have judges, we have sponsors, partners, faculty, advisors, staff, alumni, members of our college and department advisory boards, U of I administrators, members of distinguished Academy of Engineers, and of course, our students, because without students, we wouldn't really have Expo. And I want to thank everyone. That pretty much involves everybody here. I'm not going to ask you all to stand up. At least give everybody your, and yourselves an applause. Thank you. <laughs> I do want to thank, by name, sponsors and partners who have contributed financially to support Expo, because your support helps us to improve every year. It enables what you see here happening to happen. To happen. I'd like to first uh, thank our presenting corporate sponsor, which is the Micron Foundation. And then we have our presenting academic sponsor, the Engineering Outreach Program at the University of Idaho. I also want to thank all of our other event sponsor sponsors and partners for helping with our expo activities. I'm going to read off them. We have Avista, Boeing, British Petroleum, CCI Spear, the Center for Advanced Energy Studies, Hillary Packard Incorporation, 
the Idaho National Lab, Idaho Power, the Idaho STEM Action Center, ITRON, JUB Engineers, LOXO Engineers, Power Engineers, Schweitzer Engineering Labs, Wagstaff Incorporated, and Western Trailers. So thank you for all of our sponsors. And mostly, I'd like to thank our students. Uh, you know, because those of you who are in the room, if you're our students, uh, could you just stand up for a second so we see who some of them are? Yes, a lot of students here. We certainly appreciate that. Okay. Uh, this is your expo. And for many of you, expo, uh, especially of our seniors, it's the culmination of a year's worth of work. You deserve to be congratulated on your dedication to your projects, your technical uh, work, your intellectual creativity, and your academic curiosity, your tenacity, your commitment to problem solving, and your innovation. Uh, we want to thank all of our students that are here at Expo. I also want to recognize several special Expo guests that are here tonight. Um, first, we have several young women in the front row, and you can tell they're in the purple t-shirts here and on this side over here. They come to us from across Idaho and Eastern Washington, and they're participating in our first annual Women in Engineering Exploratorium, held in conjunction with, I, with Expo. Under the leadership of our amazing members of our U of I chapter of Society of Women's Engineers, these ninth and 10th grade young women will experience a full day of activities tomorrow, learning more about engineering and the, uh, the big impact they can make as part of their future in engineering. Uh, which we hope they'll all pursue engineering, and especially at the University of Idaho. So I want to say special welcome and thanks for coming. And I know uh, Chuck already made some introductions, but I'd like to uh, say a few things about uh, two of our uh, other uh, guest speakers. First, we have Alex. He's a 13-year-old app developer from Post Falls, Idaho who is, uh, he's given our first ever future engineering talk. Uh, Alex will speak at Expo uh, tomorrow about his journey developing the Ability app and talk about the things that we can do, big and small, to make the world more inclusive and accessible place. Uh, as a side note, we have a U of I computer engineering, uh, computer science student working with Alex who will be part of the team Ability app. In fact, we just identified that student just like the last couple of days, right? Yes. Yes, uh, one of our, our co-op students. And I hope that this will be a continuation of a future collaboration. So I want to say welcome to Alex and, and your parents. Thanks for coming. <laughs> also, we have Bert Rattan and his, his wife, Tanya, that are, raise your hands over there. Uh, many of you know or know of, of Bert. He's an internationally renowned aerospace designer. And we're very excited to have Bert here. He's our Expo keynote speaker. Uh, for those who don't know Bert, he was named Entrepreneur of the Year by Inc. Magazine. He's described in Newsweek as the man responsible for more innovations in modern aviation than any living engineer. He's the designer of the Voyager, the first plane to fly around the globe uh, without stopping or refueling. Uh, he's also the designer of Spaceship One, the world's first privately built manned spacecraft to reach into space. And we're very much looking forward to hearing your keynote talk with us uh, tomorrow. So thanks for coming. We appreciate that. <laughs> so. I have one more special guest to introduce uh, tonight. And I want to say thank you for being here. We have Sanjay Marotra. He's the CEO of Micron. But before I introduce him, I'd like to and ask him to come to the stage. I want to provide a little bit of context for his visit. Um, let me just get my reading glasses on. It might help me here. Okay. Some of you may know that the College of Engineering has an ambitious goal of doubling the percentage of women in our college by the year 2025. Uh, we have man many tactics to approach this goal, and one is a host of activities like our Women in Engineering Day in the fall the Exploratorium event, which is happening right now and tomorrow, as well as Expo. Uh, traditionally, these events have been very successful in converting female students to the university. In fact, many of our members of SWE 
the Society of Women Engineers participated in these events as high school students and are now engaged as ambassadors for the college. Uh, but events alone are not going to help us achieve that goal. We need to chart a broad effort to recruit and support female engineering students when they are here. We need to hire more female faculty. And we need to, uh, just as important, support both our male and female students to be able to successfully function in diverse real-world workforce teams. This is, why, uh, this is where valuable partners like Micron come into play. Micron and other industry partners are helping us not only sponsor events like this, but they're collaborating with us to find solutions to help diversify our engineering programs so we have greater impact on industry, Idaho, and the region. Uh, just yesterday, I had a conference call with representatives from many companies in the region that are helping us develop a comprehensive strategy to help develop and reach those goals by 2025. We're making great progress. And need to say we've got our work cut out for us, but it is a, it is a good uh, effort for our college to be involved in. Now, I'd like to introduce uh, Sanjay Marotra, who will speak with us tonight and kick off Expo. He's the president and CEO of Micron Technology. He joined Micron in May of 2017, so just about almost a year ago. And after a long and distinguished career, career at SanDisk Corporation, where he led the company from startup in 1988 until its eventual sale in 2016. In addition to being a SanDisk co-founder, he served as its president and CEO from 2011 to 2016, overseeing growth into an industry-leading Fortune 500 company. Sanjay holds uh, more than 70 patents. He's published articles in the area of non-volatile memory design and flash memory systems. Sanjay earned both a bachelor's and a master's degree in electrical engineering and computer science from the University of Cal California, Berkeley, and is a graduate of the Stanford Graduate School of Business Executive Program. So please join me in welcoming, see, welcoming uh, Sanjay Marotra to the stage. Do you have the sound or? Tenacity. One. Because innovation asks the tough question. Why can't? What if? Can you start it again? Where does the sound come out? Uh, Innovation isn't convenient. It doesn't play nice or roll over. It disrupts. And it takes curiosity, tenacity, wonder. Because innovation asks the tough questions. Why can't? What if? Imagine this. That's the moving frontier of discovery. And it's where ideas enrich our lives in the coolest ways imaginable. This is a shout out to the people who believe that impossible isn't a thing. Here's to tomorrow and to all those who make it happen today. Good evening. Really excited to be here, but I must admit, very humbled to be here in presence of Alex and Bert. I think such achievers, uh, and I think you'll get a chance to hear from them tomorrow. Very exciting. I'm so glad that I'm going ahead of them, and I don't have to compete with them in terms of messages that they will share with you. I'm excited to be here because as Micron CEO, I know that University of Idaho is important source of talent for the company. I'm also excited to be here because this is the time when you are holding the, the Design Expo, which is absolutely one of the most premier things that your graduate students in engineering do. 
and I had the chance to experience a couple of capstone projects and extremely impressed about the talent that is here. So it's the talent that absolutely attracts me, and that talent is due to the extremely good faculty that is here at the university. But what I'm most excited about here is the young girls that are interested in science, technology, engineering, and math are already studying it or pursuing it in high school at this point, studying here at the college. And I think it's just extremely important for all of us in this room. I believe you already do, but I just want to highlight it's extremely important for us to support women in engineering. As part of this, I just want to share with you that what is in front of us, what is really shaping the modern world. What's shaping the modern world is all the explosion of data. Everything that you do, the Snapchat that you use, creates every minute millions of photographs that, that are used on, and videos that are used on Snapchat. If you look at Amazon, Amazon sells about $250,000 worth of goods every minute. Look at Google, about 4 million internet searches take place on Google every minute. Look at Facebook, any of these, or Spotify. Spotify adds 13 songs every minute. All of this means that everything that you are doing today is, many of these things are enabled by data. Data is influencing and changing the world. And all of this data, what's going to happen in the future is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is going to mine this data, is going to look at this data and really create experiences for you that you can't even imagine can come to you in a very seamless fashion in the future. Artificial intelligence can use that data, process that data, and provide value to the businesses in the future. So the world truly is changing today as a result of all the data that is being created, that is being processed, and is really being used to deliver value. I want to give you three examples here. One, not long ago, Watson Computer, again an artificial based artificial intelligence-based computer by IBM, a Watson platform diagnosed a treatment for a cancer patient in 10 minutes, what would have taken a team of doctors supposedly 160 hours to come up with that plan. So this is what technology today is doing. It's able to look for cures for diseases, some of the biggest unsolved problems of mankind are being tackled today by using science, technology, math, engineering, and ultimately tapping into data. It's only less than 1% of the data that exists all around the world that is actually being put to some useful purpose. And you are already seeing how it's changing your life, that data today, whether it's on your smartphone, or whether it's uh, on your smart speaker in your home or on your PC, it's changing your life and it's only 1% of that data. We are in the very, very early innings of artificial intelligence. Just imagine, as we begin to tap into that 99% of the data that is still left unused, how much information, how much experience, and how much impact to our life can be achieved by tapping into that unused data as well. And keep in mind that this is a virtuous cycle. As data becomes more useful, at, as it changes our life, it actually creates more data, more opportunity for experiences. So I think what you are going to see in the next 25 years of your career, of your studies and then your career, I think will be just amazing. And you have every opportunity to impact that, to shape this world of the future. Another example I want to share with you is square kilometer array um, uh, telescope scanning the galaxies in South Africa. And that actually uses micron products in that uh, telescope. When you look up the sky at night, you see the Milky Way. 
Everything that you see, all the stars you see, that's the Milky Way. This telescope, in a short period of time, was able to find in a small portion of the sky 1,300 new galaxies. What you see today is just Milky Way, but this telescope, again, capturing data, processing it, and transferring it into useful information, was able to find 1,300 galaxies there, whereas before, the scientists knew of only 70 galaxies in that space. So data is being used for discovery, discovery in all fields of science, whether it is in oil exploration, whether it is in biomedical sciences, or in financial uh, transaction processing on Wall Street, leveraging fast, high-performance computing. Last example I'll give you is your smartphones. Today, these smartphones can be used to translate real-time information, translate between multiple languages real-time, and certainly in the future, you will have opportunity that as you speak, as you dictate certain thing in, into your phone, it will be able to translate it into multiple languages. Just imagine what this means for people around the world. It truly, the devices today are truly connecting the people. We are able to leverage the technology to not only connect the people, but truly change life. I want to share with you that in India, there are 13 different languages. And dialect and the speech and the way of writing also changes pretty much every 10 miles. So now just imagine that a farmer in India who is able to translate easily on his device and be able to sell his produce and be able to get the best value for that produce, how much of an impact on the life it is. So technology today is truly transforming our lifestyle. So at Micron, our vision is transforming how the world uses information to enrich life. All these examples I just gave you, these are truly enriching our life. It's making our life experience to be a smart digital lifestyle. And it's all about data. And Micron is a company that produces products that either store data or they process data. We are very fortunate that as a company, we are right in the sweet spot of the trends today. What we produce at Micron, and Micron is headquartered out of Boise, Idaho. It is a company of 35,000 strong worldwide, and it's very global in many different parts of the world. We have our engineering centers as well as manufacturing and business centers. And today, Micron is the number two largest semiconductor company in the US, right behind Intel Corporation. Micron's revenues are, by analyst uh, estimates, in the range of 25 to $30 billion this year. So this speaks highly of what Micron, that started in Boise, Idaho, 40 years ago, has been able to achieve and really through innovation, changing the world in front of our eyes today. How can that be done? It can only be done by people, by engineers. So our company is all about technology, and it's not all about engineering. It is actually a lot of discovery in the area of sciences as well. And of course, people that run, help run the company in all functions, whether it is human resources or it is finance. But the innovation engine has been driven by the technologists, the scientists, and the engineers at the company. And today, if you look in the US, US produces about 600,000 engineers every year. Demand for engineers in US is about 2 million new engineers every year. So we are significantly short in terms of talent. Hence, I want to encourage you that if you really want great, successful careers certainly pursue engineering. But it's not only from a financially, financial point of view for it to be lucrative. It is also you can make a real impact to the world. And I encourage you to pursue 
sciences, you are obviously interested in it, you're interested in math. When we talk about data, we talk about processing of data. Data science is a very big part of it. Computer science is a big part of it. Today, there's a great demand for mathematicians as well. So whatever within STEM interests you, I encourage you to pursue that field of study. And I, I can assure you, you'll have many opportunities to truly make a lasting impact on the world. And you'll have certainly opportunities to build a highly successful, lucrative career for yourself as well. In terms of you know, engineering, what does it take to become a successful engineer? And what does a successful engineer's career look like? I have to tell you, a successful engineer, regardless of which field of study that engineer is in, is more about problem solving. And hence, I really always en encourage the youngsters to study STEM because it focuses on problem solving skills. Problem solving ultimately enhances your analytical capabilities and regardless of what role you're going to perform in the future, regardless of the job you have, having strong problem solving skills as well as strong analy analytical skills will always make you shine. In terms of uh, engineering, aside from problem solving, as well as analytical skills. Another capability you build up is paying a lot of attention to detail. And that is also because engineering problems just will not work if you don't pay attention to detail. That is another skill that will help you in your life, whether it's in your personal life or in your business life. And all the problem solving and analytical skills you develop through the study of STEM will help you in that regard as well. So I encourage you to study sciences, technology, engineering, math, pursue your interest. And what does it take to become successful in this field? I would say be curious, be bold, be tenacious. It's extremely important to ask why something is happening in a certain way. Because ultimately, the purpose of scientists technologists and engineers is to find a better way of a product, better way of an application, better way of an experience, or better way of process of doing things. Therefore, asking the questions, staying curious is critically important. Those of you that are in high school or in college, I really encourage you that please raise your hand in your classes and ask questions. If you are so sometimes not getting the message that is being taught to you, do not hesitate to ask. So stay curious, that's extremely important. Be bold. You have to venture out, you have to take risks. I always like to say that take calculated risks, but do not be reckless. Discovery, engineering, innovation, it absolutely happens from curiosity, but also by taking risks. Third, tenacious. Many of these problems, especially when you are at the forefront of technology or uh, trying to solve any problem in your homework or at work, it always requires diligence. It requires tenacity. So if you have these three attributes, curiosity, fearlessness, and tenacity, I think you are well set to pursue a career, studies of STEM, and a career in STEM as well. It's very important for us to have more women engaged in the study of science, technology, engineering, and math, and be part of the global workforce. I am very passionate about it. When I grew up in India as a child, my father believed that two of my sisters and a brother, four siblings, he felt we were like four sons. And even more than 50 years ago, when in India it was very uncommon for women to study engineering, he encouraged my sisters to study engineering, who actually became very, very successful engineers later on in their careers as well. So he had the vision, he was bold, he encouraged the kids, and of course, you know, my sisters took upon engineering very successfully. I was the youngest in the family. With everybody else pursuing engineering study, it was natural for me to grow the affinity toward that as well. 
I came to the US to, as a, a junior transfer student to Berkeley and studied electrical engineering and computer science, undergraduate and masters. I worked in the semiconductor industry for last 40 years and I have seen this industry transform in very big ways, going from internet revolution, first PCs, to internet, to mobile devices, today the data centers, looking at autonomous vehicles in the future. This journey as an engineer over these four decades has been extremely exciting and extremely fulfilling for me. Today, the entire technology sector is focused on engaging more women in the field of STEM and in the workforce. It's important because we need diversity. Diversity opens up your mind to new ideas. You need new ideas. You need to step out of your boundaries. You need to step out of the comfort zone. You need to hear different points of views in order to ultimately create something new, to ultimately drive innovation. So diversity and having workforce that is balanced between women and men and able to hear all diverse point of views from across the globe is absolutely key to success. And hence, the ask that yes, please pursue your study of STEM with curiosity, be bold, and be tenacious. So I'm really excited that University of Idaho, the president, the dean, the provost, have really undertaken this part about bringing girls and even reaching out into the high schools to spark interest in science, technology, engineering, math. I want to congratulate the university on its initiatives, and I'm very proud as CEO of Micron and on behalf of all Micron team members to be able to engage with this university in advancing this very, very important initiative for us. This is an initiative that we are personally driving at Micron as well to engage more women, not only in engineering, actually more women in our workforce, more women across the ranks, including the leadership ranks of the company. And business studies across the globe have shown that when more women are involved in driving a business, when more women are involved in the leadership, then those businesses achieve greater success. So I think you have really very many bright opportunities ahead of you. You have many industries rooting for you. So pursue your passions, follow your heart, and I know you'll achieve your dreams. So with that, I would like to open it up for questions. And I definitely would want to hear questions from these young girls, yes. What are some of the jobs at Micron? I'll talk about it, but I have to tell you, our senior vice president of human resources, she's here. <laughs> and most importantly, she is a graduate of this university. Right. Yes. Uh, and a great example of leadership, tenacity, commitment over after graduation from here, went to Micron and really has contributed to Micron becoming what it is today. So very proud of University of Idaho graduate here. Jobs at Micron, they are in all fields, all fields, okay? There are jobs to design um, chips, and as an engineer, when you design chips, I have been a designer, and I'll tell you that the basic skills of problem solving, asking yourself why, to understand how to do things better, these are the basic attributes you need in learning how to become a good design engineer as well. There are jobs related to design of products. There are jobs that are related to applications of those products into the end markets. There are jobs that are related to manufacturing of those products, assurance of quality of those products so that we meet the requirements of the customers. There are jobs, of course, related also to everything else that is needed in terms of building and supporting growth of a company, such as jobs in finance, human resources, uh, jobs in information technology, maintaining the whole information technology infrastructure of the company. Um, I think every kind of job you can think of, they are there. And um, it's 
all kind of engineers, whether it is chemical engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, computer scientists, mathematicians, statisticians, um, every uh, material scientist, all of them are absolutely math majors and of course communication major, Steve Jansen here is a communications major because we have to communicate the story of the company as well. So really, I think there are all kinds of jobs. We have 35,000 strong company. April, you go ahead and add some comments on this. I don't know, is this on? It is on. Great. And it's even less about what your field of study, you know, the, the attributes that Sanjay described around curiosity and being bold and tenacious, you really can take any curriculum that you study and leverage it and use it at Micron. So the job opportunities are immense. Um, anything to, again, running our business, to developing our products, to selling our products, to working with the customers, um, to big data and analytics even inside of our company. There's just tremendous opportunity across the, glo uh, across the board. Um, so really, the, the opportunities are endless, and, and I would encourage you to stay in STEM. Of course, we are always trying to encourage all students, and particularly young women, to move into STEM. Um, this country, fueling the, the innovation and the growth that this country needs. Um, it's it's going to be dependent on all of, all of you, but um, it goes far beyond STEM as well. April mentioned big data analytics that is used at Microns itself as well, and I just want to share with you, in our manufacturing environment, there are, of course, many machines that are running that are manufacturing our products, and there are very many, I mean, the uh, floor of manufacturing is size of many football fields. And when these machines, when they are being run for several years, you can imagine that some of those machines may have some problems starting to develop. In a large manufacturing production floor, we have sensors that hear the sounds of machine, that monitor the operations of the machine, and they can predict that which machine is going to need maintenance before that machine goes down. And that then helps your productivity, that helps your operations to run smoothly. Just an example of what is happening in science and technology and engineering today. We are using it at Micron in our own production floor to really run our operations successfully. And of course, we talk about autonomous vehicles in the future. I'm sure that within next five to 10 years, you will have absolutely driverless cars. They say that few years from now, perhaps 10 to 15 years from now, um, if you want to drive, you will have to go to a racing car range because cars in the world in the future, and certainly it's gonna happen in your lifetime that they will be autonomous vehicles. Now just imagine what that means for physically disabled people or elderly people when they have the convenience of a driverless car taking them to their destinations. So these are just great examples. And I mean, it gives me goosebumps to think about how technology and how fast technology is changing our world. They say that this century, the amount of change will be several orders of magnitude higher than the change in progress that took place last century. That means every few years, the amount of progress that will happen is what it took 100 years last century to, to take place. All of that progress is primarily being enabled by technology. More questions? Yes. Uh, so what does Micron do to encourage, oh yeah. Uh, what does Micron do to encourage and support their female engineers? Um, first of all, we are very focused on increasing the population of our female engineers within the company. We recently have started a flexible, um, uh, workforce, uh, flexible, uh, flexible, flexible, work flexible work arrangement um, to enable uh, young mothers, but anybody, I mean, to really help uh, uh, mothers, but also young fathers to really support their lifestyle and uh, family. So that's one example. We also have um, uh, focused on recruiting more women engineers and as part of that, we want to make sure that uh, we increase 
the pipeline of talent, women talent coming into the company. So we are starting programs. We are in the very early stages in terms of improving our recruiting efforts here, starting programs so that we will have, um, when a um, woman uh, recruit comes in to explore opportunities at the company, they're able to talk to other women employees at the company as well in order to learn the experiences at the company. Uh, we are also um, uh, just recently increased our um, parent leave for both um, uh, mothers as well as uh, fathers. We gave how many weeks now? Eight, eight weeks uh, to again support family life because for women to continue uh, through the years, one of the challenges certainly comes in is family life. And we want to make it easier in terms of Micron community being able to support them better. Um, of course, we recently conducted a survey across the 35,000 uh, team members of the company worldwide on uh, pay equity, gender pay equity. And very proud to say that Micron today, uh, uh, the women pay at Micron and men's pay it's 99%. So we, we made adjustments in cases where we saw there were some gaps, and our goal is to get to 100% by? End by end of the calendar year. To get to 100% gender pay equity, very important initiative. Uh, we <laughs> and again, I thank the leadership of April in this area. Um, also, we have a Micron Women's Leadership Network at the company uh, that gives opportunities for mentoring, coaching, and just a network of women at the company and uh, creating opportunities for them to also network with outside of the company as well. So we, Micron has really very many initiatives. I'm very proud of the many efforts that Micron is making in this area. And I'll tell you, we are not at all satisfied that we are doing the best we can. This is a journey that has begun, and we are very committed to continue to advance the journey. We have started now reporting our data um, on um, uh, diversity and inclusion within the company as well, and our goal will be, starting with the senior leadership team, that we monitor the rate of progress in this area. That means in different organizations of the company, different functions, how much of a difference we are able to make as a result of these efforts in terms of successfully increasing the mix of women in our workforce and mix of other underrepresented minorities as well. More questions? Yeah, uh, since you like making examples, uh, give one example of calculated risk that you took which did not pay off. Calculated risk, which I took, that did not, did not pay off. I think there are probably many. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so as a businessman, uh, a calculated risk. I'll be very honest. Um, uh, that um, we took um, at my previous company, Sandisk, was pursuing a particular kind of technology for several years. And when you are an engineer, when you are a technologist, you think that um, it will work, that you will make it work. You want to be tenacious about it, right? And then you keep on investing in a certain technology. And this is where I say that you have to take calculated risk, not getting caught up, that keep on investing in a given technology for several years, not see the desired results. It's OK to have few failures. But then after a while, if it's repeated failure, then I think you have to, at that point, give up. And I have done those situations in my engineering career where, you know, certainly, as an engineer, continuing to passionately work on trying to solve a problem, sometimes have gone too far in continuing to invest in the technology. Would have been better to cut your losses and move to other alternative solutions.
So first of all, thank you for your profound generosity to this university and specifically the College of Engineering. You really are making a difference, so thank you. I, I think, and I'm very proud that Micron is able to support this, right? Good. Micron is a company. Yeah. So my question is, with our very competitive energy rates in the Pacific Northwest, we're seeing a proliferation of alternative currency technology, cryptocurrency, blockchain technology. Would you mind sharing a little bit of your perspective, how you, how you view this, where you see this trend headed? So this trend is very early. It certainly is um, uh, changing very, very rapidly, the technology, in order to make sure that it absolutely can be scaled up and continue to be very efficient, requires a lot of computing, absolutely requires low power computing, and certainly requires a lot of data processing. So all of those, how to handle them in a secure fashion, as you scale up, will certainly involve more challenges than what we are probably seeing today. However, I do personally believe that this is a trend that will certainly materialize into a worldwide phenomena over the course of next several years. I do not know how long that will take, but I can tell you that for Micron, that's a great opportunity as well, because that, again, processes a lot of data. In order to really make sure that a transaction is secure, it really has to verify it from many different angles, so a lot of data processing is required which means more opportunity for what Micron sells. So I just want to share with the uh, uh, young engineers here that what Micron makes is products that are called dynamic random access memory, DRAM, and flash memory products. So when in your phone you store a video, that video is being stored in the kind of memory chips that Micron makes. You can turn the power off, uh, off your phone and your pictures, your videos are still there. So this is what Micron makes. But in addition, when you are running your applications on your phone, processing of that applications and making sure that applications are running seamlessly, that's also happening in Micron's memory, which is dynamic random access memory. So very large part of the content in your phone is the kind of products that Micron makes. That's just one example, the smartphone. When you look at today's notebook computers that are very thin, very sleek, those are also enabled by Micron kind of memory solutions and storage solutions. Cryptocurrency that was just inquired about, that is yet another application where Micron solutions can play a very important role in the future. Does Micron offer high school internships? Great question. We uh, have done that on occasion to test it out. We don't have, and Janine, you can comment here, we don't have an active high school internship program. Uh, we really go uh, aggressive in college internships. And in the past, we had uh, generally looked for juniors or seniors in college, but we are changing our approach and we're trying to get students much younger than ever before, freshmen, sophomore, uh, we really want to get you engaged and excited about STEM, first of all, and then about Micron as well, very early on. But high school internships, we've had kind of mixed success, so we haven't found that perfect recipe yet. So not high school internships, but I think as April alluded to, Micron Foundation is very much engaged in various science camps, um, and Micron does invite high school students to come to the company um, in order to expose high school students to the experience at the company in terms of the technology and the product. So not internship, but you absolutely have opportunities to visit Micron facilities and experience a little bit of an environment of an engineering technology company. Um, what is something you would want to say to young people um, pursuing careers in industry about and the environmental impact of industry. And can you tell us something that Micron has done, steps they've taken on that front? So it's extremely important for us to be good corporate citizens and absolutely we care about the environment. 
We, in our manufacturing, uh, there are a lot of chemicals used. We need to absolutely make sure that dispos uh, uh, disposition of those chemicals is done in a safe manner. Recycling of materials is actually something that is paid a lot of attention to in all of our sites, as well as uh, utilizing low power yeah, running equipment in a fashion that saves energy across our sites, also important. So this is very, very important, that we are um, paying attention to the environment. And of course, uh, in manufacturing, in technology production, there is really a uh, lot of um, uh, opportunity to create uh, waste, and you have to be very careful in managing that waste. So many initiatives at the company in this area. In fact, I think on our website, um, we uh, talk about details as well, and I think you can definitely refer to that too. Great question. I mean, and again, I want to highlight, Micron is a company that absolutely cares about the environment. Micron also is a company that cares about the communities where we do business. And actually, through Micron Foundation, we engage in lot of community-related re activities that our employees are passionate about. Micron has a matching program also for uh, philanthropy. So we encourage our team members uh, to certainly give time for volunteerism in the communities, but also to uh, contribute financially to the causes that are important to them. And up to $2,000 that they contribute, every team member contributes on a yearly basis, Micron matches that. Micron Foundation matches that. I think we'll take time for one more question. So uh, Micron is very much engaged with our customer ecosystem in terms of understanding where AI is going and how our customers, you know, whether it's the customers in cloud you know, hyperscale customers such as Google, Facebook, uh, Amazon, uh, or customers uh, that are uh, on the enterprise side, we engage with these customers to un understand their end requirements, and we design solutions that will suit their needs. So Micron, remember, we supply memory and storage solutions, which absolutely are very much at the heart of all, everything to do with data in terms of AI applications. So we work with our customers to then understand how they are using their applications and their products to provide value to the end customers. For example, Amazon, you know, when they work with Amazon Web Services, when it works with a variety of businesses to host their applications, we like to work with companies like Amazon and many others to understand how we can deliver solutions that will run, may help those data centers run faster, lower power, and much more efficiently. So this is how we are engaged in AI by being the fuel that really is driving the growth of AI. Okay. Well, Sanjay, I want to say thank you. Uh, thank you. Certainly for coming here. I think we've got, um, Presents you with a gift. Thank you so much. So thank you very much for thank you. joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So again, just just for like curiosity, how many of you have been to Expo before? Well, a lot of you. Okay, great. So uh, welcome back, and for those of you who've never been, hope to see you tomorrow. We should have a great time, an exciting time. I think. I understand we've taken over the parking lot now. So uh, that's it's great to see Expo growing. And someday, once the basketball arena is in place, we'll be moving over there, right? So we're looking forward to that as well. So again, thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, Sanjay Marotra, thank you for spending some time with us. We appreciate that. And uh, we'll see everyone here bright and early tomorrow morning. Thank you.